What's up guys? In this video, I'm going to educate you on everything you need to know about the USPA A, B, C, and D license when it comes to skydiving. Now, in my first video, I told you everything that you needed to know in three steps how to get your A license, right? Well, stick around because in this video, I'm going to let you know what it takes to get your B license, to get your C license, to get your D license, and everything that those licenses allow you to do. What's up guys? Welcome back to the Prop Zone. My name is Scott Schumacher and if you haven't already, please consider hitting that subscribe button to stay up to date on everything that is skydiving. My goal with this channel is to inform prospective and new skydivers with the information they need to stay one step ahead of the game. In this video, I'm going to explain to you guys the differences between the USPAA, B, C, and D licenses. Let's get started. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to www.uspa.org as they are our governing body with all things skydiving. And that's where we're going to get the most up-to-date information as far as these licenses are concerned. So let's see what we got going on here. Um, let's see, let's see. Let's go to safety and training. Let's go to licenses. And this is where... It's all going to start, okay? So obviously you guys remember in my first video, uh, I explained how you could get your, your skydiving license in three steps. And what I meant by that was your A license. This is the first license that you will receive when becoming a skydiver as far as the USPA licenses are concerned. USPA issues for skydiving licenses A through D, indicating progressive skill levels of skill and accomplishment. <clears throat> USPA licenses remain current with membership and are recognized by the Federation Aeronautique Internationale. A skydiver is considered a student until issued a license. For the current license requirements and privileges, see the section 3-1 of the Skydiver's Information Manual. Okay, so, so in my first video, I explained to you guys pretty much everything that you needed to know about the A license. So let's go ahead and continue on from there and talk about what is required for a B license. Let's see what we got here. I'm going to click on the application for B through D. It's a PDF. It should go ahead and pull on up here. All right, let's see here. So uh, as we see here, we have the most up-to-date license application for B through D. As you can see, this, this uh, little box right here is going to be the applicant information. Put your first name, last name, address, all that good stuff, USPA number and signature. So once you've completed your A license, you're going to receive your A license number, of course. We talked about that. Uh, whenever you want to go get your B license, we need to complete some requirements here uh, in order to suffice this application. Uh, let's see here. So <clears throat> it shows that we're going to need another 10 accuracy jumps within a particular range of your target. We're going to need 10 formation skydives, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Let's see here. We're going to need to take a canopy course. This is also known as a B license canopy course. A lot of drop zones will hold these for newer jumpers, so you can go ahead and take those and uh, suffice that requirement of getting your license. You're also going to need water training. Water training. What is that? Okay. <clears throat> now, with the B license, um, we can now land on a beach. Um, we can jump out of hot air balloons. We can also jump from helicopters and a few other privileges were allowed also with the B license. Now, um, now the reason that they want you guys to have water training for a B license is because obviously um, they're going to allow you to land on a beach now, right? And the beach is really close to water last time I heard. And we want you guys to be properly trained in the event that you are going to have to save yourself if you end up landing your canopy in the ocean, in a lake, in a river, in a pond, no matter where it is that there's water, we want you to be properly trained to, to save yourself. And then of course, the last thing that you guys are gonna need is a written exam, multiple choice. You must get a certain number correct in order to pass. So as far as the B license is concerned, that is pretty much it right there as far as what we're gonna have to do. Biggest thing, like I said, 10 more accuracy jumps we need to complete a total of 10 formation jumps. We need to complete the canopy course, which I'm going to look into um, here in a minute. 
water training, and then your exam. So before we jump on to the C license requirements, let's go ahead and see what uh, the canopy course requires us to do. Right here it says that we can see uh, Skydive Information Manual 3-1. And we're gonna go back here and, oh, look at that right there, Canopy Piloting Proficiency Card. That's what we need right there for our B license. Let's go ahead and click that guy and see what's going on here. Okay, wow, we have another uh, proficiency card here, just like the A license, okay? So obviously right here, Canopy Pilot Information, you're gonna fill in this information right here. It does, it does give you the instructions that you need to follow in order to complete this. Let's go ahead and read that. This completed and signed Canopy Proficiency Card is required to obtain a USPA B license. Candidates must include a copy of this card with the USPA B license application to USPA headquarters in order for USPA to issue the B license. USPA does not issue advanced canopy ratings or qualify canopy piloting instructor examiners. USPA does not issue advanced canopy ratings or qualify canopy piloting instructor examiners. USPA requires drop zone management to verify the qualifications of the SNTA and verifying officials. A current USPA safety and training advisor, SNTA, instructor examiner, coach examiner, or board member must verify that the training has been completed by endorsing this proficiency card. See section 6-11.D of the USPA Skydivers Information Manual or the SIM. For the course director requirements, candidates must perform these training jumps during dedicated clear and pull skydives from at least 5,000 feet. Canopy pilot. By observing recommendations outlined in section 6-10 and 6-11 and other related sections of the sim, you have exhibited a level of commitment to safe canopy piloting. All right, training. Reviewed sim section 6-10. You're going to review that in your canopy course. And then uh, reviewed sim section 6-11, you're going to review that as well. Now, let's get down to the nitty gritty on what exactly we need to do. Canopy discovery drills. Jump number one, evaluation jump. We're going to want to collapse our slider. We're going to want to loosen our chest strap. Check brake line length. Practice flares up high. Plan and execute a distinct downwind, base, and final approach. When all those have been completed, they will be signed off and dated, and we can move on to jump number two. Basic aerodynamics, effective flaring, and riser turns. Practice flares, five with eyes open, and five with eyes closed. We're going to perform a 90, 180, and 360 degree turn with our rear risers, and then a 90, 180, and 360 degree turn with our front risers. We're also going to plan and execute a distinct downwind base and final approach. Once all these are completed, they will be verified, signed, and dated, and you can move on to jump number three. Jump number three is stalls. We're going to do a rear riser flare simulating a landing, full ram air stall using toggles, a full ram air stall using rear risers, and we're also going to plan and execute a crosswind orientated downwind base and final approach. Once all these are complete, they will be verified, signed, and dated, and we can move on to jump number four. Jump number four, flat turns and crosswind landings. Requirement number one, we're going to flare from one quarter, one half, and three quarter breaks in a simulated landing. This means while we're still in the air, not landing. We're going to perform a 180 degree braked turn from one quarter, one half, and three quarter breaks. We're also going to need to plan and execute a distinct downwind base and final approach. Once these are complete, they will be verified, signed, and dated, and we can move on to our last and final jump number five, the long spot. Now, the requirements for the long spot, of course, are to return to the drop zone from a long spot. Comparison, using toggles and using rear risers and what each one of those mean when you're coming back from a long spot. We're also going to plan and execute a distinct downwind base and final approach. Once these are complete, they're going to be verified, signed, and dated. And then you will have completed the five jumps necessary in the canopy course to get your B license. Once this B license or canopy piloting proficiency card is complete. The verification down here at the bottom is gonna be signed and uh, by a verifying official. And then from here, if you have completed the other requirements stated, as far as the B license are concerned, the accuracy formations, of course, the canopy course, water training in your exam, you can submit all of these with a nominal license fee to the USPA. 
and then eventually they will submit and issue you a B license number. All right, <clears throat> let's move on to the C license. All right, uh, one thing that I forgot to mention about the B license is that you must complete a minimum of 50 skydives. All right, moving on to the C license. All right, so in order to obtain a C license from the USPA, you have to have a minimum of 200 jumps. I know it does not say that on here, but you do need a minimum of 200 jumps. A lot of people, um, a lot of people strive to get the C license because it does now open up a few more doors of things that you can do in your skydiving journey or in career. With a C license, you are now allowed to wingsuit you are now allowed to start base jumping, and you are also now allowed to wear a camera. Now, as far as base jumping, wingsuiting, and jumping a GoPro, the 200 jump mark is a basic safety requirement or BSR. There are people that get away with being able to do this without actually holding a C license, but they are what's called C qualified. They have the minimum number of jumps and they have completed everything necessary in order to hold a C license, but they just have not submitted for the C license. Now, if you actually want a C license number, like I said, you need a minimum of 200 jumps and we need to complete these three requirements right here. We need an additional 25 accuracy jumps, we need 50 formation skydives of four or more people. <clears throat> now, in order to actually get a C license number, we need to complete the three requirements that are stated here. We need 25 accuracy jumps within a particular distance of the target. Now, when it comes to your A license, your B license and C license accuracies, the amount of distance that you are allotted to land within that target actually decreases. What that means is the A license, your accuracy jumps are, is a lot larger of an area that you can hit as far as the target is concerned. The B license, that area gets smaller. We need to start dialing in that accuracy to get closer to that target. And for your C license, we actually need to dial that in even more. So that's gonna be the 25 accuracy jumps. We need 50 formation skydives, another multiple choice written exam that you need to get a certain amount of answers correct in order to pass. Once you have completed these three requirements and they have been verified and signed off, you can then submit this application for your C license and in ample time, the USPA will send you your C license number. <clears throat> Once you have completed these three requirements reach the minimum of 200 jumps and these have been signed off and verified with appropriate fees. You can send this application into the USPA. They will then send you your new C license number. All right, guys, congratulations. You just completed your C license and we're now taking the next step uh, in our journey and getting our D license. Well, the first thing as far as a D license is concerned is we need to have a minimum of 500 skydives. All right, 500 skydives. What else do we need to have in order to get this D license? Well, according to the D license application chart right here, it says that the requirements, we need two of five. Okay, so we need, we need to complete two of these five requirements right here on top of a minimum of 500 jumps and another written exam. All right, so let's see what these are. Okay, so requirement number one, night jumps. All right, if I'm not mistaken, you need, if you wish to complete, if I'm not mistaken, if you wish to complete requirement number one, you need to do a minimum of two night jumps. Your first night jump is gonna be solo and then your second night jump needs to be a formation night jump. Requirement number two is that you have actually performed a water landing, whether it was intentional or not. Requirement number three, 100 accuracy jumps. And remember what I said about the A, B, and C license. As we, as we move down the list to a more experienced license, that range that we are allowed to land in, as far as our target is concerned, consistently decreases. The D license is going to be the smallest range 
that you can land on the target and you need to do a hundred of these. You need to be able to hit this target within a certain distance 100 times. That's the 100 jump accuracies right here to complete requirement number three. We're also going to need 100 formation skydives of four or more people or a canopy relative work or crew three stack. What this means is you can find your local crew dogs and ask them if they can you know, help you uh, suffice this requirement by going up and stacking three canopies together. Now, mind you, we don't need to complete all five of these in order to get a D license. We just need to pick two. So as far as I'm concerned, guys, I still hold a C license, even though I'm currently D qualified. I have just not submitted for my D license yet, but I will be doing that very soon. So the, the requirements that I have completed, I have actually completed three out of five. I have all my night jumps, I have all my accuracy jumps, and I have all my formation jumps. I have yet to do a uh, three stack crew jump and I do not currently have a water landing nor have I completed the written exam. So once you have completed two of these requirements, got a minimum of 500 skydives and have completed this written exam, you can then find a SNTA or higher. This is required to sign off for a D license, okay? So as you can see here, let's see here, D license applications require the signature of a member of the USPA Board of Directors, a safety and training advisor, or an examiner to verify these requirements and sign off your D license. All right, guys, these things right here that we just talked about are gonna be what's required to proceed from your A to your B to your C, and then finally to your D license. So that being said, this is your B&D license application chart. And as you progress through your journey, this is what you're going to be filling out. And these are the things that you're going to need to accomplish in order to hold these different USPA licenses. All right, guys, there you have it. These are the requirements that you're going to need to fulfill in order to acquire a B, C or D license from the USPA. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said, if you guys have not subscribed yet, consider hitting that subscribe button. Please give this video a like. It helps the channel grow. Thank you guys for watching The Prop Zone. I hope to see you on the next video.